let's review for a little bit. You know, this is, uh, we're, we're just starting the book today. Um, we had to wait a week because I ordered those books that day that I talked to you guys, but it took, it, uh, took us about a week for everybody and my staff to get one. So we're going to go through that today. I want you to bear with me, please. I've never done, I've done a lot of book reviews. In fact, we used to have a nightly call, a uh, weekly call in the evenings, Leandro, where we get on and we share what we got out of the book, right? Like everybody's perspective. And that's some of the value of this is the perspective is really different um, for most people, right? I'll read something, you'll read something different. You just, you might even read the exact same thing, but interpret it a little bit differently. Read between the lines. Yeah, read between the lines, right? In your background, y'all's perspective, your eco-socionomical background, your geographical location, where you grew up, all that's going to play into that nature, nurture, and how you perceive things. And we're not going to get into perception is reality, but man, that's a whole neat topic we, we'll, we will get into at some point. But for today... Uh, we, what I will do, what we will do, Leandro, is hook up some speakers. So next week for sure. Okay. The reason I think it's okay is because these first two chapters are pretty basic. In fact, the first chapter is kind of nothing more than why the heck should it matter to us that we should connect with people, right? I mean, he kind of beats it up through the process of, through that first chapter. I mean, it's like over and over and over of reasons why we should connect with people, why we want to, why we want to connect with people. So let's review real quick, right? First, we got to be enthusiastic every day we wake up. There's ways to be enthusiastic. Hold on just a second. Yeah, see this, this whole thing is messing me up, man. Uh, there's a way to be enthusiastic. Look at the first training on how we can start changing the way we think about things to be enthusiastic. We got to have a big why a vision, a dream, somewhere we're going, right? Identify the steps we need, at least know we need today to take to get closer to our dream. And then we, we, we prepare those steps in what we call goals that we write down with a beginning and an end date. We share those goals for accountability with other people. Um, there we go. I'm going to keep everybody muted just because I don't have uh, speakers. So I don't think, I, at least I won't be able to hear. Um, Okay. Thank you, Jeffrey. Did it. Thank you. All right. So we share those goals with other people so that we're holding ourselves accountable because remember a lot of times when we make a decision to do something, right, Leandro, the, the emotion's high, but over time, as time passes, that emotion in the novelty begins to wear off. And it's right in here where the novelty is worn off. Adversity is starting to set in. There's some things that we understand that we have to do that maybe we didn't know in the beginning we had to do. Looks a little bit harder now. When the rubber meets the road, when we really micro down, it becomes a little bit more complicated. And that's why we see a lot of people who have that, you know, eight months, year, 13, 14 months in a job. Another one, another one, another one. I mean, you see a guy or a gal who's had 10 jobs in 10 years, you can pretty much assume that they don't have discipline to work through that period where there's no emotion. And you know what? There may not even be any results. That's the challenge is getting through that experience without results, having buy-in in the process, having discipline, having people around you holding you accountable, having a dream that you see every morning, you remind yourself every morning of the life of whatever you want to give those you love and your family and Whatever those goals and dreams are, those have to sustain us through these times. Now, we also know, and you guys hear me preach literally over and over and over about how we cannot, the most valuable resource we have here, J Jason, can you uh, mute please? The most valuable resource we have here are, pe never mind, I got you, are people. Um, no, I don't. You need to mute. The va most valuable resource any organization, company, and or team has is people, right? So I believe with all my heart, and I know I believe it's a law, and it's as true as I am sitting right here, that we can't go the places we need, want to go without other people. Now, there are absolutely a lot of existences that don't include other people. But what I'm saying is that existence 
typically is not a dream. It's not a goal. Because if, if you try to go anywhere, you're going you're gonna to need people to get there. Um, there's a lot of distractions around here, you guys. Can you shut that door, please? All right. So here we go. It's hard enough, right? My ADD. I mean, I <laughs> shiny keys and I'm like, squirrel, what, man? You guys are making it do doubly difficult. All right. So let's just go through what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through. I told you all that when I read a book and I would recommend this for everybody. First of all, um, when I gave this book to each of my staff, I put uh, who it was from me and the date. And I think it's important when you begin to read a book that you put the date with which you read it on there because I, like I said, I've gone back, I've, I read this book eight years ago. And so I, and the next time I read it, I put the date in it too, Leandro, because I may read it a third time. And I always use a different highlighting or marking mechanism so I can see the different things that I'm seeing now that I didn't see in the past. The book's the same, I've changed, right? So I would so I really marked the book up quite a bit. I don't know if you can see it. I probably don't even need to show you, but it's like every page, right? And you see different markings. There's some underlining, there's some orange, there's some green. That's because I read the book more than once. So when I, what I did is I pretty much just kind of read it. And then when I'm preparing for this, I kind of just skimmed over the things that I've highlighted, both in the first read and this read, Leandro. And, and I began just to put some notes together. So I'm going to cover those notes I'm hoping that this will not be an hour. I don't think we need an hour to go through these two chapters because there's just not a ton there. Hopefully you guys have read it. Um, I'm, I'm so appreciative that everybody's on this call, but there's an old saying, 90% of us showing up. That's wrong. 90, showing up prepared is 90% of it. So I, I hope you guys are prepared this morning. If not, no big deal. Uh, just get caught up for next week, right? Exactly. All right, so like I said, everybody, and keep an eye on that chat. I see some things going on. If you feel like there, you need to stop me, Leandro, you, you know you can do that. Um, why is it important to connect? I, to be honest with you, the importance of connecting, it, it, it's a portal to the success that you're going to have in your life. People cannot succeed without communicating effectively. I already, I'm already talking to my son he was telling me a story the other day, and he's 13. He's very, very bright, and he's like me in a sense, I believe, where just thoughts are always rooming around, man, and it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard to kind of, there's a lot going on, right? And so he's trying to tell me a story, and he's not doing it very effectively, and I wasn't critical with him in any way, shape, or form. I'm very patient. I'm listening. I want to hear the story. I tell him that it's interesting because it was, and then in the end, I say, you know, it matters how we communicate. You're going to, your success is going to highly depend on how well you can communicate with others. Think about it. How good are your ideas if you can't share them with anybody? And you might say, well, I just go talk to them. Well, if you don't connect with people, they're not going to listen to you, right? How, so anyway, it doesn't matter what you got, no matter how good it is, if you can't communicate your thoughts and your ideas effectively to people, that's going to put up a wall and a barrier to, to your success. And it's not enough to work hard. And, and I know some people would think that. Well, I'll just go in and work hard. Well, I, <clears throat> I guess if, if, if there's a lower tier that you're trying to get to, yes. But what I'm trying to, I guess, impress upon everybody is that if you want to get to the above average tiers, and, and there's certain metrics that we can put on success, whether it's the number of peaceful years in a marriage, right? In business, obviously, the measure of success is – is based somewhat on the on the type of, of, of production you have and how good you are, but also, you know, how what your group and your culture is like could, could measure success. So there's ways to measure it. And I would say this, that for where I'm going in life or want to go in life, working hard, doing a great job ain't enough. Right. Working hard and doing a great job is not enough. If, if we really want to, to succeed, we're going to have to learn to communicate with others. So that's one of the reasons why, I mean, there's several books we could have started with, right? They're all important. But for whatever reason, I was really guided to this because in our business, now you know that when I'm talking about this stuff, I mean far more than just business. I mean, it, it's, it's holistic. It's 360 degrees. It's all encapsulating. But when I'm talking about business, you're going to have to, to 
to be able to communicate with people. You can't just show up and work hard because that's going to create a silo in which you can't get out of. The only way you get out of situations you're in is when people help you get out. That's why we have to help other people. So if we can't find a way to communicate effectively, we're never going to reach our potential. We're never going to reach our potential. The number one criteria for advancement or promotion is the ability to, uh, the ability to communi communicate effectively. I mean, I would honestly, one of the great, there were several great classes that I liked. One of them was debate. I think I've mentioned that to you when I was one of my favorite classes. I love good, honest. But when I say honest, I mean honest debate where, where we're not only articulating our ideas, but we're actually willing to receive the ideas of others. So that's very, very hard to find. But also, <clears throat> Hold on just a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I love debate and I also love public speaking. And I love, um, I, I really enjoy, I was talking to Todd the other day and I've spoken in front of rooms of 5,000, 610, I think was the one of the largest. Um, there was seven in Nicaragua, but really I like the rooms of 20 and 30 people. Those are my favorite. I mean, there's some energy, don't get me wrong. It, it's kind of cool to be, to have a good message, right? And be prepared in front of that many people is a real, rush and an energy but as far as really connecting with people you need a smaller room and i like connecting with people so um and also if you learn how to connect with people i want to ask a question do you, like if you're the type of person that has a lot of conflict in your life then i would suggest that maybe you're not a good connector of people because there's certain truths with good connectors one is and i wish it wasn't me but it is but i the tr here's this is true uh if you ask my wife she'll tell you if i enter something i have a high chance of winning i have been to events where it's been a blind raffle with many tickets and by i'm not even kidding you two events one was a golf event and the other was a movie premiere event like they give away stuff and I, <clears throat> so you get like a stack right of raffle tickets and by the end they're like who the hell is this guy what the boo because i literally am winning <laughs> So I say that to, for humor for one reason, but for the other, sometimes you know people in your life and you're like, man, they're just lucky. They're just charmed. Like things just work out for them. And I would suggest that if you have, if you see that person in your life, they're really good connectors. The reason people, things happen for them is not because of what they know, but because of who they know and who they're connected to. So not only do things happen easier and you live a little bit more lucky, charmed life, but there's also less conflict. When you have real connections and deep relationships with people and you surround yourselves with those type of people, you have less conflict, less drama in your life. And Lord knows we got enough drama going on outside. We need some respite within our sphere of influence. And again, don't give away your authority, right? Well, they, you know, they just came in and they didn't, they, no, no, no. If you, you built, you put a boundary between people that are negative in your life, people that are pulling you down the basement people, and you put a welcome sign and a welcome mat out to those who make you feel awesome about who you are and start learning to connect deeper with people. And I'm telling you, I would even give a shot of connecting with those people that are negative. Maybe they're negative because you don't have a good connection. I don't know. But I do know this, it's very, very important to connect with people. And we just went over, I think, six ways. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen real quick. And it's kind of got these bullet points. So if you all want to uh, take a screenshot, you can do so. I'll give you about 20 seconds, Leandro. Anything going on in the chat? Christopher can tell. He's stating your balance is inspiring. My balance? Wow. It is inspiring. Thank and I, you. And I'm about to reply to him. Tell me about it, Christopher. I work with this amazing mind every day. Oh, you guys, all right. Now, listen, we got to get away from that. Y'all are going <laughs> to embarrass me. All right, we're going to move forward. Uh, I hope everybody's got this. If not, y'all email me. I, I have this. I, I don't mind uh, sharing it with you if you missed it. It's, again... It's about connecting and being effective. It's not about going through the process so much, right? And stuff like this. You, it's like the process can change because it's based on connecting with people. Does that make sense? All right, here we go. I'm going to get back to my mug here. Hey, all right. Hey, there we are. Hey, how you doing? Great. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm working with a lot of different platforms here today. I'm feeling really good about myself. 
All right, the next thing we want to talk about is um, I have a story where one of the first times I went and saw John Maxwell, Leandro, uh, he started talking about being able to develop just about anything. And he talked about creativity. And it kind of blew my mind because in my mind, right or wrong, in fact, I think wrong, and I know wrong now, but when I got there, I kind of thought like creativity, like you came out of the womb. Either you're a creative person or you're not a creative person. I don't know why I thought that. I'm not saying I had any evidence to think that, but for whatever reason, that's what I thought. And he convinced me, because I actually tried what he said to do, that being creative can be developed. Now, it's like singing, right? If you talk to any real singer, if I say I can't sing, they go, no, 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 you can, you just don't know how. And I go, no. <laughs> like, I don't know what your definition of singing is, but when you hear what I do, you're going to say you can't sing either. And they always tell me that I can learn to sing to a certain level. Mm -hmm. Some people are just more creative than others. I will admit to that. But you can develop creativity. And if you can develop creativity, you can develop just about anything. And certainly we can develop being better connectors. It's not something that you have to be a natural at it. It, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, well, I'm an introvert. Doesn't matter. Well, I'm an extrovert. Doesn't matter. Not for the point of connecting with one human being. That's what we're taught. That it does. Yes, there are a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, tips in here on how to connect to a larger audience. And <clears throat> I'm going to refer you guys to a page in here that has some summary items that if you are speaking to small groups or if you're doing presentations, man, I'm telling you, I, I, as a public speaker, I use these tips. So we're not going to cover those today because uh, I don't know how germane it is to what we're doing right now, but know that being a connect, you can learn and develop the ability to connect. So well, first we have to understand how do we respond? Now, I put something out there that I definitely believe in, and that is that adversity produces seeds that few people water. Seeds of benefit that few people water. Don't waste, uh, don't waste adversity. Don't waste a shortfall, right? Because that's what produces the seeds that produce our growth, if, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? So when you face adversity, when you face trials, when you face failure, John's indicating that there's three real responses to that. And, and I like it. Like, I, it's appropriate. Could there be more? Sure. But I, I think this works. First, we crash. You ever seen it? Person emotionally breaks down. I would say what's not here, and it just came to me. I had a conversation with my daughter once, who's brilliant, by the way. She has taught me a lot. And one of the concepts that she shared Leandro, was the concept of radical acceptance. Accepting our condition, accepting the shortcoming, accepting the adversity that we're facing, accepting the challenge, the circumstance. Because until we accept it, our brains do not go into problem solving gear mm -hmm. at all, right? So people who crash, that's the first one, first reaction to adversity, failure, short, you know, shortfalls, whatever you want to call it, they crash. And you've seen it. I've seen people emotionally break down. I've seen people mentally break down. I've seen people physically break down. They're not, they don't deal well with the, the shifting winds of circumstance. The most often, like I saw somebody crash here at the office not too long ago, right? Just, just, whoa, just freaked out, right? And it, we're, we're human. We're going to have our moments. We're going to have our days. And that's typically not how that person reacts to it. But so I want to say perfection's unattainable, but how are we reacting? Do you crash? The second one's more prevalent. And if we don't govern ourselves, and we don't, we're not crashers, right? We're not, we're not, we don't go ball up in fetal position in a corner somewhere and, and suck our thumbs, but we cope. Coping is kind of in that genre of good as an enemy of great. Coping is reactive in nature. It's defensive in nature. And coping is static. It doesn't, there's no movement. There's no growth. There's just like I talked about the reason I brought up radical acceptance. It's 
radical is the name, the thing that matters. Acceptance is not what you want. Acceptance means I accept this in my life. Pete, oh man, I got chills on this one. <laughs> the quality of your life will greatly depend on what you're willing to accept in life. If you're willing to accept people abusing you, mistreating you, treating you poorly, then that's the life you're going to get. If you're willing to accept mediocrity in income, mediocrity in lifestyle, then that's what you're going to get. If you're not willing to accept it, that's the radical acceptance is I'm not willing to accept this and I'm going to do something. Coping is not that. Coping is stagnant. I've talked about this before. We're living beings, right? Think of any living being in the, in the world we live in today from a plant, animal, insect, reptile, doesn't matter. And you tell me one, it's an open question. I've asked it of thousands of people over the years. I mean, and this is true. And no one's answered me. Give me one living thing, being or creature that is not either growing or dying. You can put it in the chat. If somebody has one, I actually would love it. I ask every year, like really, every time I do it, I ask for real. The only thing that I think of when I think of static, stagnant, you know, is like, what do you think of when you think of stag, stagnant water, right? So we're 90, what, 97, 98% water? Is that right? It's hard to believe, but it's true. 97% water. So if we're stagnant, what do you think of when you think of stagnant water? A virus. Right? I think of mold. I think of slime. I think of just nastiness in, you know, larvae. Just so coping is static. Change. Refuse to accept the shortcomings. Be engaged. Be disciplined. Be committed. Be accountable to putting ourselves in a place where we don't accept the shortcomings. In fact, um, you know, I was, I was watching a video the other day and I won't, I won't muddy the water too much. And I'll share it with you this week. How's that? We'll, we'll do it as a separate thing, but I'll tease it right now. And the video was on a uh, rigid positivity, right? Like no matter what happens, Oh, I'm positive. Oh, there's something on the, you know, and, and yes, that, that's how I live my life, man. There, there, this too is part of it. This too has good in it. This too shall pass. But her message was honor the emotion. Don't be rigid, be, be malleable in the emotion, right? Like, and the example was like, if I'm reading, uh, if I'm reading the news for any media and I'm angered, I probably have a proclivity to equality and, and fairness. So her thing was that might be the light that shows the pathway for your passion and what you do in life. Does that make sense? So it's like, man, Yes, there's a, a positive behind everything, but if we're willing, if we're willing to be disciplined and train ourselves and, and follow the emotion, right? And so I was in the gym the other day and I posted a video. I, I unposted it by accident. I, again, all, uh, you know, I'm some old dude who's, Ooh, technology, what do I do now? Um, and I was in the gym and I said, the emotion of frustration of seeing my fat stomach is causing this activity and I'm just pouring sweat and barely and I here's why because I refuse to accept to be fat and out of shape I refuse my 13 year old boy is working out right now he's turned into a beast and I just can't I it's like I, I'm on an uphill climb here I can't have him being bigger than me man what if he pokes me in the chest <laughs> I'd be like it's all good son <laughs> So anyway, change, man. Change is hard. Nobody likes change, right? You think about that all the time. Change is tough, especially when you have to radically accept your shortcomings, that you have the shortcomings, and then say, now I'm not, I refuse to accept it. I'm going to develop myself. I'm going to engage in activities that make me better at this because this activity, this proclivity, this talent, this skill is what I need as a part of, to go to where I want to go. So don't cope. Don't be static. Don't be reactive to everything. Let's change. Let's identify the things in our lives that aren't working for us, right? I, I mean, it, to me, it goes back. It's easy. It's like just evaluate the results you're getting from the activities. Or, do you like them? I love the activity of eating ice cream. I hate the damn result. Seriously. So I got to stop eating ice cream unless I'm willing to accept that result. 
unless I'm willing to accept not being able to work out my, at my best, not being able to hit weight goals, not being able to hit performance goals that I've set up. If I'm willing to accept that, then what feels good now feels good and that's good, right? Take the time. Okay, so where are we? Oh man, we're doing good. I'm getting excited here. I feel like I'm in a, in a church, man. I'm about to run an aisle on a, on a brother. <laughs> oh man. You gotta have fun, baby. And in the chat, um, Steve, he's stating you gotta have fertilizer to grow the roses. You have to have what? Fertilizer. You gotta have fertilizer in order to grow, to grow the, the best. You gotta have wood to burn the fire. How many times? Think about an MLM. They come in. Oh, I want to be rich tomorrow. That's like looking at the fireplace and saying, "Hey, give me wood." And the fireplace, like, "Hey, bro," you know, you say, "Give me fire." To the fireplace, say, "Hey, bro, I need some wood." You got to go out and chop some wood. You got to go work to put it in so that I can work for you, right? And the fireplace is the person, by the way. Got to you got to feed the the person before the person feeds you. You got to give to get. We all know that. Thank you for that. Keep stopping me too. So I don't know if you guys heard that, but uh, who was it? Chad. Chad said you have to have fertilizer to grow your business. Seeds. Seeds, I'm sorry. Seeds to grow your business. Yes. And where we get those seeds a lot, a lot of times guys is through guys and gals, excuse me, it's through failure, it's through setbacks, it's through, you know, coming up with a problem you've never had to solve before. Um, all those things grow, help us to grow as we change through them. If we just cope with them, we're not going anywhere. It's static. Okay. The secret to connecting one of them is like I kind of said before, be prepared wherever you go. So how do you prepare yourself to connect with people? Only thing I know is I've said this before. I had, for those of you who don't know, I worked for a manufacturing uh, enterprise of companies. There were four companies. I was a finance manager. I built their finance department, their HR department, worked there for about four years. I was self-employed for 15 years before that. Worked there as an employee, eight to five, for four years. And then right about here, I started looking for something else. I knew I was an entrepreneur. I, I knew this would own the novelty again would wear off. And it did after about a year. So I had three years of discipline, right? Still working at a high level. So it was about right here that I decided, yeah, but right here, I decided to look for another business. People ask me all the time, why did I leave a good job? with great benefits that was four minutes from my house, from a family that I loved, people that I enjoyed being with, a very friendly, loving, uh, appreciative, employee value-filled environment. There really wasn't anything that the, we wouldn't, that you wouldn't expect a good job to have, right? Because that's what we're told, right? Go out and get, get your education, go to college, get you a good job, right? Mm -hmm. I had the good job. So people ask, why would you do that? especially when I was doing it, Leandro, a lot of people that love me were like, why the hell are you doing this? Like I, it, it scared them. Right. And that goes back to the thing. Like we have, you have balcony people that are always pulling you up and you have basement people that are pulling you down. And I think a lot of people make the misnomer that all basement people are haters or people that don't like us. And that is not true. A lot of times people don't even know it. They're being basement people, but they are doing it out of a love and a fear for what you're getting ready to do, right? So I had that a lot in my life. And people ask me then, people ask me now, what caused you to do that? And hear me out. Everybody's reason is going to be different. So I'm not saying my reason is your reason. I'm just identifying this for the purpose of this training. The first, well, they're, they're in no, there's only two things and they're not in any particular order. One of them was, I am not comfortable with someone else assigning my value to me, right? Made good money at the place, had good benefits at the job that I had. I could have rolled the dice, Andro, and I could have proven a smaller value than what he saw in me. But that's not at all what happened. My value is a thousand times more than what he was willing to put me at. This guy was amazing boss, an amazing mentor, and still a very good friend of mine. It's not a him issue. It's a that position paid that much. So to me, it relegated me to that value level. And I wasn't comfortable with that. I'd rather it be here as long as I know it's that's my value. 
but it was up here. The second thing was I recalled back in time in my life when I was actually self-employed and doing pretty well. And I remember I would drop my daughter off at the time, not even James at this time, just this period of my life. He was born, but he wasn't going to any school yet. But I would drop my daughter off, a little private Christian school here in St. Petersburg. And I would walk from that class off campus and I'd have two, maybe three, at least one conversation every day with a teacher or faculty or staff member or another parent in the parking lot. And I recognized in that time that that's where the fruit is, man. Being able to walk slowly through your life and, and take the time to connect with people and build relationships and be intentional about that stuff. Because when I was, and I think maybe a lot of people, I don't think you have to work for the place I work for to be in touch with this emotion, but I felt like I was late all the time. I felt like every time I was going someplace, it was like I was looking at my watch and I was a slave to this schedule that wasn't even of my doing, right? I mean, some of it was. And at that time, I remember I was teaching a Bible study and I was coaching Little League. And I was so grateful to have that job because it allowed me to do both. As an entrepreneur, you're working when everybody else is not, right? You're, you know, you, it's like, hey, I'm going to start a new business. Here's my picture. We'll see you in a year. So, it offered me the time to do it, but I always felt like I was behind. And I, didn't, I, went, I, I, I was done living like that. So the second reason I tell people is I wanted to walk more slowly through my life. And that's what I would encourage you guys. That's kind of my title here. Walk slowly through your life. Be intentional on connecting with people. Do you know everybody wants to be noticed? Everybody, you guys. And I know people put on a face and they look down and but everybody needs to be edified. Everybody wants to hear their own name. Everybody wants to be cared for. Everybody wants to matter. Everybody wants to know they have some kind of purpose in life, that they're loved. Listen, I mean, all you have to do to show some of that is be a great listener. Just be, be a listener. I, I just wrote some tips down about how the, the things that I've worked on when I was younger, that, you know, the list that I had in my head, like I want to, and, and you don't, the list goes away. You just become the type of person that habitually engages in these types of activities if you're intentional about it for a long enough time, right? Some people say 30 days. I say 90. You do anything for 90 days, you're going to get results. You, you lift weights, you run, you do anything for 90 days consistently, you're going to get results. Listen, listening is a physical activity. I see so many people when people are talking to them and they're like, they can't wait for me to get done talking so that they can have the idea that they have in their head. And right then, I don't know if maybe I'm more sensitive than other people about it, but as soon as I see that they're waiting for me, I know they're not listening to me. They're waiting to, to so think about when you're listening to people, what do you look like to them? What is your posture? Are you engaged? Are you drifting off? Are you looking in your phone? Be a good listener. Learn more about people than they know about you. Not for the sake of being secretive, but that means you won that communication encounter. That means I ask more questions. I know more about you. I'm, I'm interested in you. And if you find somebody who asks as many questions as you, when I find somebody like that, I feel like they read the book. Like they, they, They're intentional on communicating or connecting with me. Uh, doesn't mean that that's true, but that's always what I think. Um, <clears throat> let them talk about themselves. You know, somebody says, hey, man, I just took my, my family to Clearwater Beach last week, you know, which is 30 minutes from here. And you go, man, that's great. I just took my family to Peru. Like, it's like, to, you know, you want to connect and, and, and you want to find common ground and relate. And I get it. Most of the time that's done out of a good spirit. It's just an, a, a lack of knowledge or, or ignorance about it. Don't let tell that story some other time. Let them have that. Right. Let them have the stage. Let them brag on on their vacation, even though it's so much smaller in scope and distance and grandeur, let theirs be the big one right then. Be an active listener. It really comes down, if we get through, we get through this and we're moving good, um, it comes down to put placing value on others more than ourselves. And I don't know if I put the stuff in here, but most of the time when people can't do that, it's because they're insecure. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying it, it's hard for an insecure person to compliment another person, right? It's so it's, it's not about us. It's about them. And if we're insecure, we're really thinking a lot about self 
And listen, I have my own securities. I'm not above it. I'm, I'm not, this, this ain't, this is a no judgment zone. We're in the nest here. We're in the trust tree. And I'm telling you, if you find yourself where you can't edify someone or you can't make it more about them than you, you may have a self-worth issue. And we can have a whole different training about that because that's something that I dealt with, you guys. I was, bro I was raised in a broken alcoholic home and I was called, to, and listen, this isn't gonna feel bad about Matthew, but understand, I didn't come out of this house where everybody was like, you're the best, you're great. And I was like, okay, I'll train people this stuff. We either taught how to do something or we're taught how not to do something. It's how we react, right? So don't think that, that you got to come from this amazing, beautiful puppy's breath and ice cream place to exude this. I trained myself to be like this. I, I, didn't, I was going to break the cycle. I was taught how not to. I think I've told you, I went through years where I was purpose driven on sharing with my kids when I tucked them in at night that they're world changers. They're difference makers. They're love. They matter. They have purpose. They can do, right? I, I got chills everywhere and I would have never had been so adamant and, and, to, and, and intentional about speaking those words of truth over those babies had somebody not abused me and told me how shitty I was, pardon my French, when I was growing up. So listen, the circumstance doesn't matter. It's how we respond to the circumstance. Ask great questions. People, like I said, they want to be noticed. Look to serve. And I'm going to stop here real quick. When I say serve, I don't mean, and, and listen, this isn't a bad thing, right? I don't mean like, hey, let me know when I can help you out. That's, that's nice to say, and I'm not saying it's not. I'm not even being cynical about it. But I have this saying that a guy, John Kite, an old mentor of mine, gave me, and it's be meaningful specific in people's lives. Be meaningful specific in people's lives. If you know somebody just lost a spouse, don't ask if you can bring dinner. Take dinner. You know what I mean? It's just an easy thing. Be, be specific on how we bless people and how we connect with people. Look to serve them in meaningful ways. And if you're a good listener, you're going to look for ways you can help them because that's all really people want. Nobody wants to be sold, but everybody wants to be helped, right? Look for ways to serve and look for ways to compliment people. I have here on my notes, page 17, bear with me, I'm referring, oh, if you got your book, you guys turn to page 17. I didn't have, I, I wasn't going to go through, uh, through the challenge of typing this and creating three columns, but man, I, I wrote above this when I was reading predictable. It's these three columns, high achievers care about people as well as profits, low achievers always preoccupied with their own security. Right. You guys know those people They're they're in the business meeting. You got five people, four talking about growth of the company and one's worried about his next paycheck. Everybody's worried about their next paycheck. That's the secret. It depends on what you focus on. High achievers view subordinates optimistically. Low achievers show a basic distrust. They seek advice. Don't seek advice. Listen well to others. Avoid communication and rely on policy and manuals. Boy, I know a few of those people I've worked with in my time. So listen, I just want to direct your steps to this page. Um, man, look at this. Identify where you fall on this. And if you're over here on the right or in the middle, don't cope with it. Don't accept the shortcoming. Make a change and exude this left column, okay? It looks probably right to you, but it's left to me. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to pop this up. Jeff, I mean, uh, excuse me, Leandra, Leandra, look at that, see if we can find anything. I'm going to share this screen for the purpose of a screenshot if you guys want to get my notes. I'll leave this up for about 30 seconds, and then we'll move on. I've only got Leandra, I'm behind. I'm behind, baby. We're going to make it happen. Yep. Okay, three, two, one. You know, I say that, but I don't even know how to do it. There we go. <laughs> All right, connecting is the next slide I put up here, and we touched on it already, Leandro. Connecting is all about others. Yes, we want to be better connectors. Yes, we are looking to grow and go somewhere, but again, we cannot go where we want to go without helping others go where they want to go. You have to understand that most people, and you guys know my baseball analogy, right? 
Most people, when they're thinking about success or finding success somewhere, they're thinking about the point of contact where the bat meets the ball. What we need to really think of is the approach because if the hands are in the right spot, you guys, the bat's just going to end up where it's supposed to. That's the wisdom is, is that's one of the, the, the prisms of wisdom is counterintuitive. The intuitive nature is to try to, I'm just going to think about this bat and this ball when really we need to be thinking about our approach. We need to be disciplined. We need to practice over and over and over to get this muscle memory and find this approach so we don't have to worry about the bat. If I know that I really love other people, I don't have to worry about connecting with them. All I can do is worry about love them right? The connection part comes, right? If you make it about others, all this stuff naturally comes. Okay. It starts again with being enthusiastic. If you're not enthusiastic about your life, if you're not confident and secure in your life, there's, it's very, very difficult to be enthusiastic about other people's lives. And people like enthusiasm, guys. They want, everybody wants to be around enthusiastic, you know, joyful, optimistic people. They're hard to find out there right now. Most of most of the world that I see and I'm disengaged, you guys know me, I, I don't need to be engaged in everything. I, I know nobody gives a crap what I think. So I don't put my opinions out there because nobody cares. They don't care in person. You think they're going to care from a post. So I don't engage in that. But man, you can't turn on the TV without negative, 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 negative. It's all negative. Finding negative people's a dime a dozen. Find optimistic people with a joy in their life and a care and, a, and an enthusiasm for every day. Man, that's the kind of people I want to be around. And you're not going to influence people if they don't want to be around you. You first have to be attractive, right? Um, have great expectations every day. I read a post that says people don't have bad days. They have bad moments that make that, that they assume for their whole day. I wish I could articulate it as well as Dave Anderson did, but it's something like people don't have bad days. They have bad moments and they predicate those moments over their entire day. When if you could just get over it, right? That we're going to have short, we're going to have adversity guys. We're going to have stumbling blocks. We're going to have roadblocks and uh, speed bumps and all of these different circumstances that are going to cause to try to stumble us. That I think if, if we can get our mind right, then we stop lamenting those and we start seeing those as absolute growth opportunities. Man, that's when the things change. That's when that joy is a lifestyle and it's not reactive to outer circumstances. When we begin to see, like I said, adversity produces seeds of benefits that few people water. That's what I mean. Water those seeds of adversities. Don't shy away from failure. Don't shy away from the speed bump. Don't shy away from walking into a place where you're a little fearful of, because honestly, opportunity disguises itself. A lot of times in the way of failure and sometimes right behind the cloak of fear. If we can get past that and see, a lot of times I think we see some real opportunities. Um, we must value others. We've got to serve others. We've got to want to add value. To, there's no way you're going to add value to people if you don't value people. You have to value people. It's just, it's just that simple. If you're like, well, I don't value people, then go serve. I promise you serve people. It, you, two things, two places it's really hard to hate people. That's one when you're on your knees, you try to hate somebody on your knees and the others when you're serving them. If you have a hard time relating with people or connecting with people, man, find a way to serve, find a kitchen to go serve, do, do something, find some way to go serve others and you will begin to develop a malleable, loving heart for people when you see what some people have to endure with every day. And it'll start making you feel a little bit better about some of the adversity that we have to overcome. Because I know for a fact, I've seen some crazy, crazy stuff out there, Leandro, and it just breaks your heart and it makes you think differently. And, and then once we do that, it's so much easier in, in that environment to put everything about others. And then the more we do that, the more that permeates who we are, right? And it just becomes like, man, this, this is who I am. So, you know, serve others, find value in people. And if you're cynical towards people, get off the internet, get out of the news and go serve somebody. Make a change. Don't cope. Don't cope. We must first help people get what they want before we get what we want. I'm going to say that forever, the rest of my life. You never know me and not hear that at some point in time because we need to remind ourselves all the time. You talk about counterintuitive. I mean, it's hard, right? Should I take care of me or my brother? It's even in the Bible, the my brother's keeper, right? 
We cannot get ahead by correcting others. We can only get ahead by connecting with others. People don't want to be criticized, you guys. And honestly, most people don't care about our opinions and what we think. Their value systems are different. Their culture is different. Their background's different. My son said something the other day, like, I can't believe somebody likes this. And I go, I find it odd that you still don't understand that people have different likes and dislikes. Right? And he, you know, he shot back at me because he, he recognized, my, recognized my subtle note of sarcasm. Um, but it's the truth, right? I mean, it's, it's the truth. You can't get ahead by correcting others. It's by connecting. And that's especially tough with a 13 year old because they need correction. So how do you balance that with connection? And I tell you how you balance it, how I balance it is I make sure I'm intentional to engage with my son on things that are not dealing with his performance issues, right? It's just about his video games. It's about his friends. It's about, you know, baseball. It's about his swing lesson. I take him to all his practices and everything. And that's, kind of our connection point, right, is, and for, for Catherine, our connection point's Jesus. There ain't no question about it. With James, it's kind of what he's going through, being a man, baseball, friendships, that's our connection point, dealing with challenges. Um, sometimes he's very interested in what I have to say, sometimes not so much. <laughs> you got to pick your spots, right? Timing's everything. If you're a good listener, this isn't even in my notes, but if you're a good listener, you're going to recognize when somebody's not receiving what you're giving. And if it really is about them, then we will stop. It won't be like, I got to get this message out because for me. It's like my message is not being received right now. So I don't know. For those of you married, I mean, I'm approaching 23 years. I dated Stacy for five. So I feel like I have a little credibility. Timing's everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> not, not urinating on the seat toilet helps a lot too. I can tell you that. All right. Focus on other problems, not our own. There's a time and a place for everything. Right. I mean, the easy thing is when, you, you know, just be professional, right? When you go to work, you really shouldn't be sharing all of your life's drama problems with people at work. You should be professional. Take that to a greater extent. There's times to focus on our problems, but I can tell you right now, it's not when we're with other people. It's not when we're connecting with another person, unless you're seeing that person to deal with your problems, like a clergyman, a pastor, you know, so, you, so under, you hear my heart, right? There's no absolutes, but when you're with other people, make it about them. And it goes back to that wherever you are, be there, right? Mm -hmm. I used to have to train that a lot because you have salespeople who have like seven appointments all day and their second one's running long. So they're already thinking, how am I going to communicate with this person? What's going to happen here? And your head starts getting out there and you're not listening and you're not connecting and you're blowing your sale right there. So I don't care if it takes you six hours, you're there for that person. You're not there to fulfill a schedule spot in your stupid schedule. I mean, it can really irritate me because... The, the line of work we were in was to provide financial assistance for people. So it mattered. Uh, and the line of work that we're in now provides wellness products to people. So it matters. Um, all right. I have this note. Immature people don't see things from someone else's point of view. They rarely concern themselves with what is best for others. In many ways, they act like small children. That is a John Maxwell quote. That is, I'm Matthew and I'm your friend. That I didn't say that. John did. Quote. Immature people don't see things from other people's point of view. They rarely concern themselves with what is best for others. In many ways, they act like a small, like small children. So I don't want to accept acting like a small child. So <laughs> I'm going to change and not cope. Um, okay, so hold on. Let me put this up there real quick. Look, look at this. We're almost done, baby. I got a little bit more. I think we're going to come in. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm not big on bragging on self and I mean that, but for some reason timing, like I figured like this subconscious too, cause all the whole time I thought it was going to be late and we're right on time until now, now, because I'm talking to you now we're overing it. No, we're just kidding. We're on time. No, 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 we're good. All right. Um, hold on. Let me put this up here real quick so you guys can see it. First of all, let me switch it. Yes, there it is. All right, here you go. Ah. All right, take it down in just a few mementos. All right, here we go. We are ready and live again. All right, the last one It is uh, something you can take notes on. I will post it after. But I titled this tile The Big Three, Leandro. 
The big three, the big three questions everyone asks when they come in contact with you. It's the questions we ask, our, we ask to ourselves in a, in a subconscious realm. And if we think like this, it's going to help us navigate through the connection path. Certainly, if you're not a great connector now and you're going to become one, if, we, if you just, this is kind of what I did in the beginning. I just thought this stuff all the time, these three questions. The first one is, the first thing they want to know is, do they care about me? Do you care about me? It's that old adage, right? They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So we got cliche after cliche we can throw into this truth that do they care about me? Mutual concern creates connection. Mutual concern creates connection. We talk about all the time, somebody's got a problem, now it becomes our problem and we want to help solve that problem, right? Nobody wants to be sold, but everyone wants to be helped. Most people have a strong desire to succeed. Most people have a strong desire to succeed. So when they ask, do you care about me? You need to understand that they're looking to, typically they're looking to succeed and accomplish something. They're looking to solve a problem. The better listener that we are, the better connector that we are, we can find out what that problem is and create a mutual concern, which creates common ground. We talk all the time, common ground's so important. How many times does a corporation do a team building event? Rope courses, we're going out to dinner, we're doing a resort for the weekend. What that does is those companies are manufacturing common ground. They're promoting connectivity by creating an environment that everyone shares in and in the team building, everyone struggles in and everyone needs other people. And what that does is it, 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 it may, they literally are manufacturing a connectedness through the web of people. They're also, if they're good, and I used to train this when you do it, you're not only looking for that bulk, it's going to be the bulk. If you've got any kind of decent culture, a greater majority of people are going to really connect. And then you're going to see outliers. And the outlier, everybody might think, is always a bad thing. It's not. Sometimes the outlier is the way above average. Right? You remember that thing I talked, that guy talked about his fake data and we have outliers, but we're always, when we ask a question, the first thing, well, the average is this. So we're kind of always training to the average. So I know that's a little bit further on my ADDs kicking in, but first question they ask, do they care about me? Second question they ask, can you help me? And they're not asking it out loud, right? This is what the mental process people go through when they meet somebody like you who's talking about something like we talk about. Nobody wants to be sold. Everybody wants to be helped. Features and facts. Here's where I think most people get it wrong. They want to throw it, and I've done it. Here, that, the reason I think this is because I've done it. They want to throw up on people. They want to give them information. They want to give them features and facts and benefits. Features and facts get glossed over. Show, I've said this before. We're not a logical being first. We're an emotional being first. So there's no reason to try to attempt to approach our being from a logical standpoint first, we get there through the emotional standpoint. I don't care what your stats are. If I don't like you, or if I don't connect with you, or if you don't act like you're listening to me, you think I give a rip what your features are and your facts, and I don't care. So facts and figures and, and features get glossed over. Show how you can help. Be, again, meaningful, specific. Find ways to help them get where they're trying to go. And the last one is, can I trust you? And the note I have in here is trust is more important than love. That's subjective, but it's meant to stir thought. Trust is either more or as important as love. Because it's hard to have love without trust. I think I can trust somebody. Like I trust my prescriptions ready at Publix because they told me it was. I don't love Publix. Right? But if I love you, I, there's got to be, like, I, I do love you, Leandro, and I trust you. Do you guys love anybody that you just totally don't trust? And I'm not talking about that familial love. It's Aunt Clara or Uncle Bob that nobody trusts anyway, but I got to love. Them. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone with whom you would connect. It's hard to connect with people if there's not an inherent love for people and a value for people. All right, so let me, uh, let me pop this one up, and then we're done, you guys. I, in the next time, I'm telling you guys, we're going to get – some microphones, hold on, I gotta switch this now. 
We're going to get some microphones uh, so that I can hear you all. And please, 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 whether you are on now or whether you guys listen to this on uh, recording, please read the next. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to tell it right now. Let me look at the index. I, there, it's like, I think it's the next two or three chapters. It's, I, what I'm trying to get is to is 50 pages every week, which is nothing, right? It's less than 10 pages a day. Uh, bear with me here. One. So let's just do, yeah, yeah, let's do four and, no, we'll do three and four. We're going to do three and four. So that'll take us to page 72, Leandro. Mm -hmm. And we're at page 22 now. It's 50 pages even. Mm -hmm. Man, I love it when a plan comes together. All right, hold on. Let me, let me see you guys. All right, thank you very much, Leandro. Before I get out, is there anything that we need to, any comments, cares, questions, suggestions, concerns? I just asked that same question. Um, and Val, my Pauline, she stated one of the biggest things I took from the first reading, it was the ability to connect begins with understanding the value of people. Amen. So the ability to connect relies on our understanding of the value of people. Thank you for that. That's a wonderful, I, that's the stuff I need you guys. This, I've never done anything like this uh, behind a camera. I've always been in rooms and been able to feed off energy and I'm a counter puncher by nature in all walks of life it seems. And so I really appreciate the energy. So again, that's why I'm kind of bringing up the speakers for next time. I hope you guys will come with some questions and some comments and additions. Um, and I hope you guys let me know if, um, well, I'll, I'll save that for next time. So we're going to do chapters three and four for next week. I hope we have uh, some good attendance. I hope you guys are using it. To me, honestly, I know that of 100% of the people that come, there's only a certain percentage that are really going to engage with this. And as time passes, the, the engagement level will go down. But at the end of the day, we're going to have some people that are going to, uh, going to create in themselves some skill sets and some awarenesses that will make life so much easier. I'm telling you guys, joy can be found in, it's not the amount of money. It's, it has very little to do with outer circumstances and more of how we perceive life and engaging in these principles and just being disciplined and keeping our head down and, and working that plan doing that. And I say all the time, when we engage in right activities or value aligned activities over long periods of time, man, that's when massive change happens. That's when life changing events occur, but we have to keep our head down and go and go and go and do every day. My prayer is that you guys find the discipline, the uh, energy and the encouragement to engage in these practices every day. My, my prayer is that you're not coping that we begin to change when we come in contact with shortcomings and failure. And my, my last prayer is that everybody, you know, if there's, if there's existences or things in your life that you're accepting now that you don't want to accept anymore, don't accept them anymore. Don't accept them anymore. Radically accept the fact that you don't accept that and engage in activities like we're doing now to change. I will tell you this, I am looking for people um, that are going to engage in this with me to to kind of live this business with and, and get a little bit closer. And certainly there's some advantages to hanging out with the leader of any team and or organization, but I do, I am looking for running buddies. I am looking for that little wolf pack. So please feel free, Matthew at cbdbiocare.com um, to, you know, interact with me. I am, I didn't res accept friend requests on Facebook for a long time because I never used it. I am now, uh, I'm not very good at messenger. I don't have all my notifications up. Best way to get in touch with me where you know I'll read it is an email, right? And as long as it doesn't go to spam, if it does contact somebody, let them know you can't get in touch with me, but I'm looking to connect with, you know, a smaller group that are really going to do it. I think this is for everybody, right? Anybody can tag on, but those that are really engaged and really fun and disciplined, listen, I can reward you. I can, we can do this together. And you, if, if you're doing this, you know, we, I, like I said, that, you know, man, man, manufacturing common ground, we're going to manufacture common ground together. All right. So I hope you guys take advantage of that. Um, we are definitely changing the model of this company. It's less come aboard and we hope you succeed and more. I'm going to find the people who really want to and are, 
are indicating that they want to by their actions and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the rope Jason says the last thing together we're better continue to grow amen amen court of court of three is not easily broken yes. my friend amen. all right you guys hey man I love doing this stuff if one of you guys are getting something out of this it's worth it and I gotta tell you one person's already get something out of it that'd be me ah. And Leandro, that's what he said. Y'all have a great day, man. Be enthusiastic. Tomorrow's Friday. Woo! Can't get more enthusiasm than that. Happy Labor Day. Oh, Labor Day, too. All right, you guys, go kill it. Thanks, Charge. And.